Hi guys! Today I want to show you how I carved, glazed, and finished these fun oil lamps I made. These have been on my mental list of things to make for a while now, and I'm really happy with how they turned out. I love trying new things with pottery, and making these oil lamps was a fun challenge, and I do love a good challenge. I threw them all different shapes and added different carvings to them as well. I really enjoy all the possibilities with pottery and the variety that I can do. Making these all the same would have been kind of boring to me, so I made them all different instead. There are some similarities too, though. They all have a wide shape to hold the oil and a narrow neck to hold the wick. Other than that, I made them all unique. After I threw them, I let them dry to leather hard and then did some minimal trimming on them. Then it was on to carving them. This is one of my favorite parts of making pottery. I really enjoy experimenting with throwing pots of different shapes, and I also enjoy trying different carving techniques on my pottery. For this first lamp, I decided to do some triangles with lines in them. I like this pattern as it looks a bit woven, which is interesting, and it's simple to do, which is always good. I just mark out a top and bottom line and then section it out into triangles and add lines going one way in all the upward facing triangles and lines going the opposite way in all the downward facing triangles. I especially like doing this pattern on rounded pots as the geometric pattern contrasts with the round pot and ends up looking great. This next lamp has one of the most simple patterns ever, <laughs> but it probably takes the most time out of any of these designs. I use a round loop tool for this and just take out little bits of clay in a row all the way around the pot and then continue the pattern on the next row by removing bits of clay offset the previous row. It's really simple to do, but it adds awesome texture and I love how it looks. I certainly wouldn't want to do this all over a big pot, but it's awesome for smaller things or accents on part of a pot. I decided to do accent carvings on all these lamps rather than all over carving like I frequently do. I like the contrast between carved clay and uncarved clay surfaces, so sometimes it's fun to just carve part of the pot like I did here. This next lamp has this awesome angular section in the middle. It's the perfect place to carve on this one. I do frequently prefer more rounded pots, but I do enjoy throwing an angular one here and there for variety. This one, I just added vertical lines offset of each other. Super simple to do, but it makes a big impact on the final design. I know I've mentioned this in previous videos, but I don't generally plan carvings ahead of time. 99 times out of 100, I decide what feels right when I have the leather hard pot in my hand. Maybe that's weird, but it works for me. I said earlier that I like geometric designs on rounded pots. Well, I also like organic designs on rounded pots. Again, I just do what sounds good at the time. So for this lamp, I carved what I refer to as a wheat design. It doesn't exactly look like wheat, but that's what it reminds me of. <laughs> This one is super simple too, and quick! I start by carving wavy vertical lines, and then I remove little bits of clay at an angle, all down the sides of the lines spaced a bit apart. Maybe not really like wheat, but it definitely looks plant-like and adds a really organic feel to the lamp. This lamp has a kind of flowery opening at the top, so adding even more of a plant-like feel seemed fitting for it. Then, for this last lamp, I decided to put the carving in the cinched waist-looking part of the pot. I ended up doing alternating long and short lines, which really emphasizes the skinny part of the pot. And then I went around and did a similar design around the top of the pot as well. This one has a slightly wonky square opening at the top, <laughs> and the lines really highlight the opening. By the way, slightly wonky is just another way of saying character. This pot has lots of character. It's a good thing. <laughs> then I left the pots to dry fully, and they were bisque fired in my kiln. They all came out great. If there's any moisture left in the pots, they can explode in the kiln, so it's always nice to have a bisque load of pots come out in one piece. Then it was on to glazing. This is not my favorite part of the process, but I had recently purchased some new glazes before this, so it was more interesting than usual. I poured Amico Glacier Glaze on the inside of all of them, as it's so much easier to pour glaze on the inside of narrow pots like these. Then I glazed the outside of them all differently. I used Mako Midnight Rain for the angular lamp, Mako Glacier Blue for the curvy one, Amico Jade for the one with the wheat carvings. This is one of my favorite glazes I've ever used. It's a really pretty green. Then Mako Blue Surf for the lamp with the triangles and lines, and finally Mako Norse Blue with the lamp with the great textured carving. After another trip through the kiln, they were all done and they turned out so awesome. I had made little hollow sphere wick holders for each of them, and they all look so good.
The angular one had the glaze run more than I anticipated, which can be a problem when trying out new glazes that you're unfamiliar with. So the bottom of this one doesn't look so great as it's stuck to the kiln shelf, but I'll be keeping that one and I can sand it to look better, so it's okay. The other ones had no issues at all and they look really awesome. I love the variety of colors and the variety of carvings and how they turned out. Okay, so I know I said these were done, but oil lamps actually have an additional step after firing. Turns out, due to the nature of lamp oil, it can leak out the bottom of an oil lamp even if it's watertight. That was something I did not know prior to starting this project, but thankfully someone brought it up on one of the pottery pages I participate in, so I was able to solve the problem before my lamps ever even had that problem. <laughs> no one wants a leaky lamp, so after these lamps were all glazed fired, I lined them all with lamp liner and let them dry for a few days. This was an easy step, but also very important so they don't leak. I've had oil in the lamp that I kept for over two weeks, and it hasn't leaked at all, so it works! I added a wick to each lamp by cutting a cotton wick to the right length, threading it through the holes in the hollow sphere wick holder, and then adding it to the lamp. The wick holder works great, and the lamps work great too. I have used the angular one that I kept several times. I put citronella tiki lamp oil in it, and it works so great! My family likes to eat dinner on our back deck rather frequently, so it's fun to have an oil lamp out there with us, and it helps keep bugs away with a citronella too. I'm very happy with how these oil lamps turned out, and I am planning to make more, but I am neck deep in a wall hanging pottery project at the moment, so it's not happening immediately. But you can buy one of my oil lamps immediately, they're listed on my website, the link is in the description of this video, and also you can check out my latest kiln opening, the link's right here on the screen. So thanks for watching and I will see you next time.